The show is brought to you every single week, well, every single time, by BetUS, where the game begins. You can use the promo code NCAAF2021, and it's going to give you a 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500, and it is sportsbook exclusive. I can't stress it enough. Make sure and go grab the deal while you can. There's a link in the description for that, so make sure you can just click the link. It's going to toss the promo code in there for you. Uh, along with that, I host a show for BetUS, the college football show over there. Chris hosts the SBR Picks college football show for Sportsbook Review. You can find that as well in the description. Go ahead and check those links. Make sure you are subscribed where you need to subscribe. Chris, let's talk the college football preview for week seven. I asked Chris, let's see, four questions every week, and and we kind of dive into exactly what is going on in the weekend. Chris, what is the best game of the weekend? Best game of the weekend, Rocky Top, baby. Not close. Not close. I agree. Ole Miss going up to Tennessee. I, I, I'm going to tell you this. You know I don't go to a lot of games. I really, really, really wish I had more free time in my hands. My ass will be heading up north to Knoxville. It is. It's going to be slammed. It, like you said, there has not been a game like this in quite some time. Quite some time. So, yeah, I'm a... Uh, I, I'm, I'm curious to see the scene. I think it's going to be sold out. They are checkering Neyland, and for those that don't know, it's you know they've got the checkered end zones. It's white and orange. They're going to do the same thing in all the sections. So every section, white or orange, it's going to be checkered across the board. It's pretty awesome uh, the way that they do it. And when they've actually got something to cheer for, uh, that stadium can get very rowdy, very, very rowdy. So I am, uh, I'm pumped to see it. And, you know, Ole Miss... We'll see what happens with them. They they are two and six against the spread in their last eight SEC games. So with all the hype about Kiffin, defense hadn't really shown up to play. I, it wouldn't surprise me for Tennessee to win this game. Of course, it's less than a field goal spread, but I mean that's that's definitely one of them. I had a couple of other options here. I don't think Kentucky Georgia is going to be a good game, so I'm, I just kind of marked it nope. off the list. Uh, Oklahoma State Texas I think could be a lot of fun. You kind of feel the same? Yep. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, hang on. It, it could be a dud of a game to watch because Oklahoma State has basically said we're going to play in the mud. We're going to become a Big Ten team, and we're going to see how that works out slowing these big teams back. Yeah, yeah. I th- they are really good against the run. and that's so I think it could defense. be a close game, but I don't know that it would be an exciting or fun game. That Casey Thompson might have an injury. He, he yeah, might have a thumb injury. Yeah, a busted thumb. Yeah, so that, that could and be you – you got that defensive front that's been giving people – hell this year and at some point in time one of those big hombres is going to fall on that thumb no you're you're right you're 100 percent right uh another interesting game or best game of the weekend whatever auburn at arkansas man i think them razor pigs are going to be fired up for this one at first game back in Fayetteville since wait what week three i guess it was uh because that's on my list of other things that we're going to talk about Yes, uh, that one is is big, big. And, uh, and BYU Baylor, I think, could be a lot of fun. We're going to talk about it here in a little bit, but that Jeff Grimes story is uh, very interesting. Of course, he was hired to Dave Aranda's staff over at Baylor uh, after leading BYU to an 11-1 season last year as the offensive coordinator. He is doing some fantastic stuff with that Baylor offense right now. I think that could be a lot of fun. Who, uh, who has the most to gain this weekend? I got an answer for you. Okay, I think, fire away. I think it's Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, yeah. Tennessee can move to five and two. If there's the chance that game day comes to a Tennessee game, they haven't done it in a long, long time. Uh, this is a big time recruiting cell for Heupel's program. Uh, this, I think, this is a big weekend for for Rocky Top. Yeah, I mean that was going to be my answer. I just was trying to get off of the game. You know, to just keep talking about other games. Ain't, ain't no sense in getting but, off the game. It's the I think it's the biggest game this weekend. I think it's the most it's interesting. The game I think the it's the best. The whole college football world should be centered around it. Yes. That. Yes, 100%. 100%. I know that Tennessee is not ranked in the AP poll or whatever, but they should be. I, I don't care. Their two losses care. have stacked up pretty well. I mean, you go to Gainesville and lose, okay, that's totally fair. You lose at home to Pitt, who only has one loss on the season, and turns out they're actually a pretty good football team. And it was a close game. Yes. Probably Pitt came in and kicked the shit out of them. And I think they would have won had they played Hendon Hooker the whole ball game. Yes. Hendon Hooker, the man. Dude, I got I can't. I'm so excited to watch that kid play football. 
<laughs> he's really good. He's he is. really good. He he most certainly is. He's big as shit, too. I love that. <laughs> uh, who has the most to lose this weekend? I think it's a 20-point spread, so no one thinks they will lose. But you give old Gus two weeks to, to prepare a new quarterback after coming off an injury, it's Natty. It's Natty loses. It's, it's, it's all over. Everything they've done so far is over. Yeah, that is a that is a big one. I, I had trouble with this one this weekend. I mean, obviously the big ones, you know, it, Ohio State loses or, or whoever, right? There's all kinds well, I mean, of But all of the people that it matters if they win or lose, I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. I think this is where we should talk about Arkansas Army or Arkansas or Auburn. Yeah. The loser of that game is going to lose a lot because right now, they're firmly like planted in like the top tier of the SEC West, which is pretty much you know pretty strong right now. And and you lose this game, you 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 definitely get relegated to the middle tier, and people start questioning should you go lower than that. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're not wrong. Obviously, you know Iowa is an eleven and a half point favorite at home uh, against Purdue, but man. They have not fared well against Purdue. They're only one in three straight up against them the last four years. Jeff Brom has some kind of hoodoo magic uh, against those guys, so that that could be an interesting one. Now Purdue has not been able to score. Uh, their quarterback has turnover problems. Like I, I don't expect it. The other one, the most to lose this weekend, Iowa State has already lost two ball games. I, they're going to Kansas State this weekend. Like all that hype about Matt Campbell this year, all that crazy stuff. Like I. Cash that lottery ticket when you can. What do I tell you, Gary? Oh, yeah. Every year. Listen, don't put that some bitch in the cupboard and think it's going to be fine next year. I can just pull it out anytime I want and cash it. Oh no! There's oh an no! That thing's date. got a shelf life, baby. Yep, you are not wrong about that. So I, that's a crazy one. It's a it's a six and a half point spread in favor of Iowa State heading to Manhattan, Kansas. On the, so. on the road, man. Yeah, you never know about those games, man. The Wildcats always play kind of crazy, and Skylar Thompson's back. Like, who knows what to expect out of that team right now? Uh, the playoff sleeper that you've got for this week, I I'll start us off. I got a weird one. Okay. I I looked at Ole Miss's schedule. If, I've been giving us Ole Miss all week, all year. So, so Ole Miss, like, I don't I don't think anybody really consider, especially after the Alabama loss a couple weeks ago. I don't think anybody really gave them a ton of credit, but if you get through Tennessee, you got LSU next week on CBS, and I think they're going to put up points on the Tigers. You got at Auburn, you got Liberty, you got A and M, you got Vanderbilt, you got at Mississippi State. Is there anybody on there that really scares you if you can get this win in Knoxville? The answer to that is no. And what you got to wonder, what you got to think about is, can, can Alabama go on the road and win a game? Uh, that's that's the question because if so the reason I've got them as a playoff sleeper now you only have to get Alabama beat one more time one more time baby so, and they got to go to Auburn who has been just a thorn in Bama's side hey don't not even the Auburn game here is what Alabama's got left if they get through Mississippi State this weekend you got Tennessee for homecoming and then you've got yeah, a bye that, week at, like at Alabama stuff at Alabama I don't see anybody beating them. Well, you you say that yes, but they have had more losses under Saban at home than they have on the road. So, I mean, who knows, right? And Tennessee's offense against this Alabama defense. I mean, A and M put up forty one on them, and A and M only put up ten on Arkansas. Now, obviously, we can talk yeah. styles, make fights, all that kind of mess. You know, what it was a perfect night for A and M. We get it, but you got Tennessee there, you got LSU, you got Arkansas coming in, and then you got at Auburn. So it how L- they, L- LSU ain't beating anybody this year. We, no, we're not winning another. We're not winning another SEC game. I told you if we didn't beat the state, we weren't going to win another SEC game. We're not winning another SEC game. I, I really, I I do feel bad for you, Tigers, because it, losing Butte like that was, that was the offense. And weapon. think, listen, let me let me tell you something. No other team in the world has had three players, three players like Jamar Chase, Derek Stingley Jr., and Keishawn Butte. With that kind of talent, and got to see so little of them. True. No other team in the history of college football has had three stars that good and got to see so little of them. No, you're 100 percent right. 100 percent right. So yeah, with Alabama, like if you get Alabama beat one more time, and that is not out of the realm of possibilities with this team. Uh, you now could the absolutely... problem is, is, let's say they get to Atlanta 
with one loss, and they get whooped by Georgia. Like, everybody else has been whooped by Georgia. But now they got two losses. Now, let's say the whole damn rest of the country's got two losses, <laughs> except for Cincinnati and Georgia. Okay? okay? Let's just say there's chaos, because I don't think that's outside of the realm of possibility, by the way. I think, I think you're right. right. So, can a two-loss team miss? They're not, they're not going to be – Alabama's going to jump in because Alabama beat them head-to-head and everybody's going to say that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't think so, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibilities that Ole Miss could beat Georgia. Like, and the reason I say that, Georgia has not had to play oh. an offense like this. I'd love, to, I'd love to at least see it. I think Georgia's the best team in the country, and I don't think it's close. Oh, I agree. But I'd at least like to, I would at least like to watch it. No, I, I very much agree. They might whip their ass, but I want to see them whip their ass. No, I'd, like I said, I, I agree with you 100%. I do think Georgia is the significantly better team. But you look at the offenses that they've faced so far, like I don't have any faith in Auburn whatsoever. So, you know, whatever there. Arkansas was coming off of a gauntlet. Uh, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, UAB, and Clemson. Like, uh, name me an offense in the in the first four there. No, no. And this weekend, yeah, they're yeah they're playing a, you know another another terrible offense that does exactly what they want them to do. Georgia Run the football. Georgia has to go to to Knoxville by the way on November thirteenth. So that could be interesting. That could be and not that I think Tennessee is great. Obviously, Florida was able to shut down that offense, but. Uh, they they have got it clicking right now. No, but Florida was able to shut down that offense early in the season. Yep, yep. You're right that about that. That's obviously a team that is getting coached up. They're getting better every week, which is what you're supposed to do. It's what good coach teams are supposed to do. I told you this was a spectacular hire. I told you that I like this hire. Yeah. No, no, no. Everybody no, no. laughed at me. <laughs> I was the guy, baby. He's a good hire. He's a good coach. It's a, and that's what they've needed for a long, long time is a good hire. Just a good hire. Danny White looks good right now. He certainly does. Okay. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.